Hello, I'm Yanis Delibaltadakis from Delft University of Technology, and I'm going to talk about abstractions of the sampling behavior of stochastic event trigger control. Event trigger control is a sampling paradigm in network control systems where the components of the system communicate only when certain events happen. Numerous studies in the past two decades have shown that ETC reduces resource consumption, such as energy and bandwidth. However, through these two decades of research, its sampling behavior has remained a mystery. And due to that fact, we cannot formally assess ETC's performance, for example, how fast the system is expected to sample, and we cannot predict ETC's sampling patterns. Well, there is actually very recent research on ETC sampling behavior, and it classifies the two branches. First, we have the analytic techniques, which come with interesting results, but also limitations. And an important limitation is that they do not provide an insight on the richness of all possible sampling patterns that may be exhibited by ETC. On the other hand, there is the abstraction-based techniques, which abstract the sampling behavior of ETC by finite state systems. Through their traces, these finite state systems do provide an insight on all possible sampling patterns, and they actually constitute computationally tractable objects. So, by combining these two characteristics, we can assess and predict ETC's sampling performance. So abstraction-based techniques so far have considered only non-stochastic systems, and they haven't constructed a general framework to study sampling behavior properties. They have been written in more specific contexts, for example, computing a specific metric of the sampling behavior. Well, in this work, we consider stochastic systems, and we construct a general framework for sampling behavior properties. We consider sequences of state measurements and intersampling times. And we argue that expectations of functions of these sequences may act as indicators of sampling properties. Furthermore, we abstract stochastic ETC sampling via interval Markov chains. And we use these abstractions to obtain bounds on said expectations. This work considers linear systems with additive Gaussian noise. And as usual in ETC, the control input is held constant between consecutive sampling times. In periodic ETC, which is what we study here, the sampling times are determined by periodically checking with period H if a state-dependent triggering function exceeds a certain threshold epsilon. In our case, this uh, triggering function is just the deviation of the current state from the previously measured, measured state, which is called Lebesgue sampling. And an example of this uh, functionality is shown here in the figure. But also because we do not like the possibility of the system running open loop indefinitely, we introduce a maximum intersampling time here, k max h. And to ease the notation of the presentation, we just assume that h is one. Finally, the difference between consecutive sampling times is called intersampling time, and it is actually a random variable that is conditioned on the initial condition zeta of ti. So we adopt this notation here, tau of x, which declares that we have a random variable that is conditioned on the initial condition x. We define the sampling behavior of ETC to be the set of false sequences of state measurements and intersampling times, x and s. Uh, the first element of each sequence is just x comma zero because the first intersampling time is assumed zero. Now this set comes with an associated probability measure, which is defined by this formula. Given the previous element of the sequence x i s i, the probability that the next element is in r comma s where r is a region in rn is equal to the probability that the state from initial condition xi at time s belongs in r and that the intersampling time of xi is s 
Given this, we claim that if you define functions over y, then the expectations of these functions act as indicators of sampling properties. And in this work, we constrain ourselves to functions that take the form of discounted cumulative rewards. But actually, as we argue later, uh, the, the, our framework is actually much more general than that. However, to demonstrate expressivity of uh, cumulative rewards, consider this example, where the reward of xi si is just si, the intersampling time. Then what you get with uh, as an indicator is the expected discounted sum of intersampling times, which definitely provides an idea of how fast the system is expected to sample. So the problem statement of our work is to compute non-trivial bounds on these expectations. Oops. So some preliminaries on interval Markov chains, well, these are like regular Markov chains, but they have interval transition probabilities instead of concrete ones. They may be equipped with a reward function, as you can see here, and then we're able to argue about the expectation of the cumulative reward given some condition on the initial condition. What is important to note here is that in contrast to regular Markov chains, where this, uh, with the, where this expectation obtains a specific single value, here it obtains a whole range of values because we're dealing with interval transition probabilities. But efficient algorithms exist to compute the infimum and the supremum of this range. To abstract the sampling behavior via IMCs, uh, first we partition Rn into two parts, a bounded set X and its complement, and we further partition X into polytopic regions Ri. Then, because we want to encapsulate information of intersampling times in the IMC's behavior, the states of the IMC are actually all possible combinations of regions Ri and intersampling times Sj plus just one more state x complement for all states outside x and all possible intersampling times. If you look here, this state is made absorbing, which means that once you end up there, you never leave, and implies that we don't really care about abstracting what happens outside x. For the bounds and transition probabilities, recall that the probability given xi si as the previous element of the sequence, that axi plus one comma si plus one is in r prime comma s prime is equal to this probability, which is conditioned on xi. So now to compute, say, a lower bound on the transition probability from a whole region r comma s to r prime comma s prime, you have to minimize this probability over all x in r. And for the upper bound, you just have to maximize it. And finally, for the transition to x complement, to the x complement state, you have to sum all these minima over all intersampling times from 1 to k max, because actually we haven't even abstracted intersampling time here. To obtain bounds on our expectations, we equip the IMC with a reward which is defined as follows. For states r comma s, it admits the value that is the minimum of the actual reward of x comma s over all x in R. And at the state x complement, it admits the value, the minimum over all x in Rn and over all s from 1 to k max, over all intersumming times. So to give an example here, in the sum of intersumming times example, where the reward is just s, Every state r comma s admits the reward s here, as you see, and the state x complement admits the reward just one. Then to compute a lower bound on the expected cumulative reward with initial condition x zero, it suffices that we compute the infimum of the expected cumulative reward of the IMC with initial condition R comma zero, where R is a region containing X zero. 
and correspondingly for upper bounds on our expectations. Uh, finally, for how to compute bounds on the transition probabilities, I'm not gonna delve into much detail. I'm just gonna say this. To compute these minima and maxima, we basically employ a series of complex relaxations. We take advantage of the fact that the state is a Gaussian random variable because our system is linear with additive noise. And then we write the probability of interest as a sum of Gaussian integrals where the optimization variable X appears linearly in the mean of the Gaussians. Then we end up with optimization problems of log concave functions over polytopes, which is something straightforward to solve. To conclude, we have constructed a framework for characterizing ETC sampling behavior. And this framework is actually much more general than just cumulative rewards. It may even encapsulate PCTL properties, such as probability of exhibiting a certain sampling sequence. Furthermore, we have abstracted stochastic PVC sampling via interval Markov chains, and we've used these abstractions to obtain bounds on our defined metrics. For future work, well, we're currently working on numerical examples because when this work was submitted, it was only theoretical. And we're trying to generalize the dynamics and the triggering conditions that are considered. Finally, we're thinking of equipping the IMCs with axioms to obtain IMDPs that would allow for synthesis of sampling strategies for optimality and safety criteria. Thank you very much. <laughs>